first of all, uh, who are you, where are you from, and what do you do in KD? Uh, hello, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, my name is Lais. I am from Brazil. I live in Rio. I'm in KD since 2015, and since then I've been a developer, a working group, fundraising working group member, and this last week I got into KDEV so I can help uh, KDE more and more each time. <laughs> and I think it's that. <laughs> yeah, hi, I'm Lydia. I am the president of KDEV and I'm with KDE for about 13 years now. Um, and I am from Germany. In my uh, free time, that belongs to KDE. In my work time, I work on a sister project of Wikipedia as the product manager for Wikidata. Lies, you work uh, on free software in your spare time or you are employed? I am employed by a company in Brazil and so I contribute to KDE on my spare time. But I'm looking for opportunities to do that more and try to organize my schedule so I can contribute to KDE more because I love this community. <laughs> I want to make everyone happy. Um, do you feel it is harder for a woman to get a job in IT? At this time, I don't think so. Because all the companies are pushing so hard for diversity, so most of them are making it easier for us to get jobs on, on this field. But for me personally, I don't think that because I didn't suffer most of the problems that all other women get, get on this field. So I was able to get my internship, I was able to get my job, and without much problem because they saw how I did my work and saw value on it. So most of the time I think it is how you show yourself, how you see, uh, like a sell is a bad word, how you show yourself to show value for the company. So these days I think that is easier to get jobs, but obvi obviously have ch we have challenges like any other company or, uh, or any kind of work. So I think it's getting easier, but I don't think that should be like have too much attention because oh, I want to hire a woman for that position because I don't have woman for that position. So I think we could have some meritocracy. No, no meritocracy here. It's like it uh, could be equal opportunities to get that job, but not related to meritocracy because for meritocracy we should have. Uh, all equal opportunities but we don't know how we history and then each person has a different history and something on that will make that people different and that could be give uh, the person an advantage or disadvantage you know so i think yeah. okay okay um yeah so i think once you are a technical woman who has proven herself in some way, then yes, um, it is getting a lot easier than it has been in the past to get a, a job in a friendly, open company and so on. Um, but in general, we're still far from where I think we should be, um, simply because it already starts so early that um, young boys and girls are treating are introduced and treating technology in very very different ways right um, tinkering with a computer is still more something young little boys do than long, uh, young girls do and and that's sad because um, these are formative years that that uh, have a huge influence on on your future and and how you develop and what you even think about as a potential career path for you um, so yeah, I think we still have a lot of work to do there. Yeah. Uh, I have something to add, is that for, uh, you can see here two different points of view. Uh, Lydia is in you know, technology far more years than me, and I'm uh, like on technology on the market on the past like three years. So it's different point of views, but I agree with her because of these tasks. Because, but it's something that I see some changes about uh, critical thinking, about emotional intelligence. That has schools getting those kind of classes of on these subjects, and then you can 
um, like almost introduce the kids on the same things when they are young. Um, and that part I can agree. Okay. Yeah, maybe maybe um, the the main problem is uh, in, in education because uh, uh, just to to tell you a, a little bit of statistics about uh, twenty percent of all programmers are women, w which is a low number. Uh, but the point is that almost the same um, number, almost 20%, uh, are also the women uh, that attend um, uh, information technology uh, in uh, university. So basically the problem could not be uh, uh, only on the side of bu businesses but uh, just in society and how society uh, thinks uh, that are uh, uh, some jobs are more manly and some other more feminine so yeah i am i don't know i have things to add about it uh, you think uh Let's see technology. Technology is growing very fast and we don't have people on the market to fill those positions, right? And on college, yeah, most of people that join the college are men, but because men could be more interested on that uh, in that field than women because we have the the personality too because we can we can we can show kids and teenagers about technology even and Maybe they won't be a they won't be a field of interest. So doesn't matter how hard you can push for equity in mainly in technology because it's a field that has more men. Because maybe the girl won't be interested in doing that course. So there is a personality thing and a biological difference between us that will make it hard to make everything like fifty fifty because there is fields of interest, there is how you are raised as a child, there is how the, the school prepare you for the challenges of life. So, and technology is going, it's evolving too fast and we don't have manpower uh, to fill that. So this gap will, like, I think that could be higher in the future than are now because we, and also we are not forming people I don't know how our universities here but in Brazil for example we have every semester like 40 to 60 uh, people join the university and every semester we got like five people graduating so like uh, we don't have pe all our people we are forming l less people or people are leaving the college because it's hard okay. Okay. so because also because of our, our history on high school that we are do not have good math in school and okay. computer science needs math and then you go to college and see there is a lot of different then you get out so doesn't matter how hard we can push on each side to have more equality or Diminu uh, get the gap less, bigger, okay? Uh, it's just hard. Um, yeah, it, it, it is definitely hard. But for example, when I studied computer science, um, one of the things uh, one of my professors did in the very first year uh, was to take away the advantage that a lot of the people in the room had by starting us uh, with programming in Haskell instead of one of the things that everyone um, programs in. So because he did that, everyone was equal. Everyone knew nothing. Yeah. Um, no, and, and that made a huge, that made a huge difference in not making individual people feel like a failure because everyone around them already knows everything. Um, and if you if you're sitting in a in a class of 300 people and everyone else knows how to program and just you don't, that is a huge confidence <laughs> issue. Um, and so by by getting us started on Haskell, he he took that away, right? And there was no one who who had that that intrinsic advantage of many many years of previous programming. Um, and I think that had a huge impact on on the gender and um, ratio of people leaving in the class because in uh, previous years a lot more women left very early because they did not have those many years of programming before they got started um, so so they did that and I, I think it had a huge positive impact yeah. so we definitely know that uh 
the gender gap exists and sexism exists. Um, and of course, they exist everywhere. Uh, my question is, with the ideas of freedom and collaboration, the uh, free open source community treats uh, a woman more equally uh, than, for example, businesses. <laughs> Um, I don't think you can make a general judgment uh, across all businesses versus all free software projects um, because there's huge differences between companies. Some are very, very progressive and are super welcoming environment um, and some are just not. <laughs> and it's not that different in free software. So I think it really depends on the project you end up in. Um, how much of an issue that is, and thankfully in KDE that is is not that much a prob of a problem, right? We have many respected women in the community, and we have many male allies who who support us, and and that's really great. I wasn't thinking to talk because I don't. I only have the experience on KDE and in Python in Brazil, the com Python community, but. Um, I think that people are evolving on the way they treat, they treat each other. So you can find that warm welcome on the community and have you can have the opportunity to grow like I, I got in KDE. Was Tomais invited me to join the community and he said, oh, let's, next year I could go to get you to a sprint in, in Switzerland. And I said, oh, no, I don't believe that. And then next year I was in there. So in KDE, you have a lot of opportunities to to enter the community and do great things for yourself and for the community. So, and I don't, I never saw any problem gender related here. Uh, in Brazil, we have uh, I was kind of part of the Python Rio community, and we all these bigger communities have a, a code of conduct. So, and people, we are like, we are evolving better. So we don't see much problems on that because we are a woman, we are a man, we are anything. So I don't see many problems because people are evolving. But there's like these old communities, like the Linux thing that happened last year with Linus. But he saw a problem on that and he's trying to fix it. I don't know if he has, I think that it's a work in progress, okay? But because there, there is uh, these communities that could have more old people, dinosaurs. I don't know. Uh, they lived in an age, in a time that these things wasn't kind of problem, and now they are. And we need like to try to put ourselves in their place a little bit to understand how this change could be difficult because change for everyone is difficult. We are there are more like younger, open-minded people. People that is try, uh, looks for that is kind of easier for them to not do anything gender sexist related. But people that are, they live on this subset of thinking, we need to try to put ourselves on their places and try to figure out a better way to try to change their, their minds and together so we can uh, keep improving that kind of relationship. I personally never seen uh, insults in KDE mailing lists and I'm in there like 10 years this year so uh, but this is mainly for, for Lydia which is in free software more more than me. Have you ever seen any kind of insult, especially uh, racist or uh, sexist insults in free open source software's uh, mailing lists? So, yes. Um, thankfully, uh, I have the opportunity to choose where I spend my time <laughs> um, and my talent and that that really um, is a deciding factor on which communities I want to be a part of and, and which I don't. And I'm very sure that I'm not the only woman out there who, who makes her decisions based on, on what she sees and in a mailing list, on a blog post, and how people treat each other in general. The next question is, um, what can we do about it? What can we do about sexism and generally gender gap? 
um, I think what has helped in, in KDE so much is installing a sense of mentoring new people is important um, and there's plenty of opportunities to find a mentor and there's usually someone around who can answer a question for you because this hurdle of um, asking a question and being perceived as, as not intelligent enough, as not good enough as and all these things is a problem for everyone but it tends to affect women even more than men. Um, so we try to do a lot to make sure that people know it's a welcoming community where they can find people to help them out with a problem and, and help get them started. And I think that is a very, very good stepping stone. Um, the other thing um, that usually helps is uh, opening up employment opportunities. Um, on average, women still do a lot of uh, the unpaid work in the family, which means they don't have that, on average again, much time to contribute to free software in their spare time. So the more opportunities we open up for people to get paid for their work on free software and the more they can make a living of that, um, I think that will also make a huge difference. I just want to um, add, even if it's uh, obvious, that free software doesn't mean free as in uh, free stuff, yeah. but in freedom. So, um, and, and freedom is always a cost, it's always a price. So. Um, talking about KDE, so this is going to be directed to, to you, Lydia. Um, do you know how many people do work on KDE? And which is the male to female ratio? I mean, I don't have a ratio <laughs> because we, d we don't track that. Um, and even saying how many people work on KDE is a very difficult question. Um, but I think we're talking in the thousands of people who, who contribute in, in some shape or form to KDE. It, several thousand. Um, yeah, who contribute in some shape or form, and that can be programming, that can be translations, that can be documentation, event organizing, uh, helping people solve problems, all these kinds of things. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, which kind of tasks uh, usually women do uh, in, in KD mainly? Uh, of course, I'm talking about uh, a general image. I think we have women in all kinds of um, positions and doing all kinds of tasks. Um, but in general, I think it, it is fair to say that they tend to gravitate more towards the tasks that help with organizing um, work, um, helping people come together, solving um, solving conflicts and, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Can you uh, present some uh, examples of uh, women you know that do uh, a great job in, in KDE or generally in, in uh, free open source software? We start with her. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, Valerie, for example, who was supposed to join us here but unfortunately couldn't. Um, she's doing an amazing job um, helping to organize our students' programs to get people who are in their university time to work on useful projects uh, in KDE instead of uh, projects that are then thrown away, like unfortunately many university projects. Um, yeah, I, th I think she's uh, doing an amazing job there. Free software, KDE. Uh, <laughs> I could be Lida, she's the president of KDE and since I've joined the community and met her uh, was the first time that I met you was last year? Could be. You yeah. didn't went to Rwanda in 2006? Uh, no. no, okay. So I met Lydia last year and I was like all shy because I asked, oh. I asked, I asked for support and I didn't know how everything worked in the community. And like, for example, Valerie, when I was in the social welcome event last year, uh, last year in, no, yeah, it was in Vienna. She was layers, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, you, hello, Valerie." <laughs> 
So uh, I think that uh, I got a really warm welcome from everyone in, in KD, and yeah. that's uh, that's it. Uh, yeah, Lydia. <laughs> Uh, is there anything you'd like to add? Join us. Um, KD has so much work left to do and we can use so many more people to help us uh, get there. And yes, uh, we have all the support groups. We uh, will build the, the mind map now and people that want to join the community and look to find like your spot could look at this mind map that you make available on um, some KD website probably until this is is out we can send you that and i think that everyone can do some open source things uh kde for, for sure changed my life when i got in here because i has a brazilian person we most of the time we don't think like ah we can get out of this country to do some stuff out there and with KD, I'm on the third, <laughs> on the third trip abroad, yep. just because of KD and the work that I've been do doing here, and that really makes a change in my life, because it was because of my work here that I got my first internship, and after that my job is because of this that I go to events to share with people that they can have these opportunities here that is not hard that is not like a thing of another world because I'm going to I'm going to Italy to academy and the people say huh? that is impossible for me and it isn't you know I thought that that was impossible in 2050 and now I'm here so KDE has really changed my life and everyone, every company is now value any history on open source or for software projects. And as Lydia said, we have a lot of code to maintain, we have a lot of stuff to do, we are planning huge stuff for the future, so we need people. And like, if you have an hour, two hours per week, that's good. Join us and help us to continue to build this amazing community so we can achieve 20, 25, 30, 50, 100 years. Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the invitation and that's it. Yep. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for answering my questions.